what our research adds is the perspective of citizens. So you ask about the impact of challenges on democratic uh, governance, but what lies between those two is the way in which citizens interpret those societal challenges and how their reaction creates a demand for a specific political response. And that political response might then uh, have implications for, uh, for, for governance. So to address that, we've studied uh, how citizens, uh, what, what they believe, their identities, their hopes, their fears, um, those kinds of things. Uh, because, of course, if all the citizens in a certain country, if they were all very happy with the way that things uh, were going, we would not see the current developments. We would not see a rise in populism that we have seen uh, uh, recently. And uh, that, that, that's why we think that a real understanding of these uh, issues, of these developments in politics, uh, should also offer an understanding of which processes play a role in the minds of individual citizens and also in the groups that they perceive they, they, they belong to. What is it that moves citizens in the direction of, of less support for certain democratic uh, principles? Um, and overall, what we tend to find is that um, uh, socioeconomic inequalities, they play an important role um, in the support for populism. I think one of the main contributions of the survey, um, the international survey, is highlighting that these anti-democratic attitudes, they're not limited to those with lower socioeconomic status. The survey indicates that actually people with a higher education degree are also more likely to hold anti-democratic attitudes in that, for example, they would like to restrict the right to vote uh, to people with enough political uh, knowledge. So in this way, we analyze populism and anti-democratic attitudes as being part of a conflict between different groups in society. Uh, there are two sides to a conflict, and I think especially in the case of populism, we tend to, our research tends to focus on, on one side, um, uh, namely, um, given that populism is seen as a major threat to democratic legitimacy, uh, the research investigating populism focuses on who supports populism. And uh, often this research finds that uh, support for populism is related to um, uh, feelings of misrecognition, a, a perceived lack of respect from others in society, and, and so this relates to populism, and this also sometimes explains a, a large part of uh, differences between socioeconomic groups in support for populism. It explains why those with lower socioeconomic status often have stronger support for, for populism. Um, however, our data uh, show that uh, some people also reject populism for exactly that reason, and even support ideas uh, uh, to give ordinary people less political inf influence. So this kind of anti-people elitism, so rejection of populism, uh, consistently we, we find this uh, more strongly among those with higher education degrees, and then especially those higher educated people that attach a lot of value to their, uh, to their degree. In this sense, one could actually say that behind populism and, and the current challenges to the authority of institutions is an educational conflict between those with different levels of education, uh, in which one group, those with uh, without higher education, they come to support populism, and the other group, those with higher education, they, in response, actually advocate more elitism uh, in response to the populist uh, threat. to increase trust in government and other institutions, it's necessary to ensure that people like their representatives and need to perceive them as acting in, in their interests. Um, and there's several things that, that I think uh, that we can do. Uh, one thing is to ensure more educational diversity in political representation. So to make sure that the voices of those from lower socioeconomic status, especially lower uh, education or, or practical education, uh, that they are represented more in, um, in parliament, for example. And an another recommendation would be to uh, make sure there are uh, closer ties between representatives and the people that they are representing to their, their citizens to ensure there's also more substantive representation that the politicians address the issues that uh, citizens uh, uh, care about. And this kind of relationship between politicians and citizens relates to another line of research in our project. Um, we address the polarization uh, and in some circumstances letting people with very different opinions come together and talk to each other that actually can help uh, them to get along better and to uh, better and to reduce uh, polarization. And maybe we can extend this to politicians as well. Maybe we can suggest to politicians that they go out there and actually talk to their citizens to listen to their uh, to their concerns and and uh, and and why why they have certain concerns and certain uh, certain wishes. Mm -hmm.